your promotional and brand building activities are more effective when they're linked. Links make your activities look more consistent to customers. It makes you look trustworthy and professional. It gives customers the confidence that they know what to expect when they buy from you. That kind of advice fits the maxim that we so often use that most good marketing is common sense. So why do so many of us not do it? This guidance doesn't just come from us. It's based on the concept of integrated marketing communications, a concept first devised by Don Schultz. Don Schultz is known as the father of integrated marketing communications. He was also a professor at Northwest University near Chicago. I mention that because my niece went there, which is obviously tremendously important to you. It's a shame to reduce a life's work to a soundbite, but let's just go through Schultz's basic description of integrated marketing communications. And I'll quote verbatim here. Integrated marketing communications ensures that all forms of communication and messages are carefully linked together. At its most basic level, it means integrating all the promotional tools so they work together in harmony. If you take a look at most small and medium-sized enterprises in the UK today, that would be enterprises less than £50 million turnover, you'd have to reach the conclusion that most of our marketing communications are not integrated. They're fragmented. And that means our marketing activities are not as effective as they could be. So if we're going to fix that, what exactly needs to be integrated? What do we mean by integrated marketing communications? Well, for the answer, you could go to Schultz's main two books on the subject, Integrated Marketing Communications and IMC, The Next Generation. But you haven't got time for that. So let's cut to the quick summary. First of all, there's the visual element. This is the most obvious element of integrated marketing communications. It doesn't mean that everything you do has to look identical. It just means you need to keep on using the same visual cues that will mean people recognise it as coming from the same brand. So make sure you use the same logos, the same brand colours, the same typefaces. Make sure you use images in the same way in your construction. So don't use a huge image with a little bit of text on one promotion and then lots of text and a thumbnail on another promotion. Adopt a style that uses similar text quantities. So don't use 250 words of small print in one promotion and then two words in headline style in another. And use similar image styles as well. So don't use photos in one promotion and cartoons in another. Adopting this principle saves you a huge amount of time. Think of this as an efficiency measure rather than a straitjacket on your creativity. If you use the same look and feel in all of your promotions, each promotion will be easier to produce. You can use and reuse the same templates over and over again. You don't have to create everything you do from scratch. This also has the advantage of abiding by the principle of distinctiveness as espoused by the Ehrenberg Bass Institute. The director of that institute, Byron Sharp, said in his book How Brands Grow that the strongest brands in the world get strong by using the same visual cues over and over again so they build real recognition in people's minds. It's no coincidence that the strongest brands in the world still use their original logos or something very close to it. Byron Sharp doesn't say that it doesn't matter what you promote, although he does get quite close to it. You get the feeling that he doesn't care too much that his logo looks like an avatar from a 1990s video game. You get the feeling all he cares about is that you recognise it. What's less encouraging is that Sharp also points out that in the game of distinctiveness, big businesses almost always win against smaller businesses. Because big businesses have the budget to put their logo, to put their visual assets in front of every single eyeball. 
But that doesn't mean that regular businesses should ignore consistency and not try to impose a level of integration between their communications. We can still develop our own level of distinctiveness in our smaller geographies and our market niches. And at the end of the day, consistency looks good. It looks professional. Anytime, anywhere. The second aspect to integrated marketing communications is across the channels that you use. Be wary of any advice that says, for example, your Instagram adverts should look completely different and fresh to your other adverts. That advice is simply wrong. This doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the features offered by different channels. So your website can show video, whereas a print advert can't. You can encourage more interaction and feedback from social media than you can from TV adverts. So yes, do use video. Yes, do encourage feedback. But remember that the channel serves the promotion. It's not the other way round. Don't let the tail wag the dog. The consistency of your promotions and the way you present yourself to the market matters more than the channels you're using. So just because Pinterest lets you put silly cartoon ears on people's faces doesn't mean that you have to do it. Imposing consistency becomes even more important when we start to recognise the benefits of promoting ourselves through multiple channels. Analytics Partners did some wonderful research a few years ago showing that the more channels you use, the more effective your campaigns become. In short, more channels have more impact as long as we maintain our consistency through all those channels. So if you had £3,000 for a campaign, you'd be better off putting £1,500 towards one channel and £1,500 towards another rather than playing all of the 3,000 into a single channel. The next aspect for integrated marketing communications is consistency across activities. At any given time, you're probably doing sales promotions, PR work, including social media, events and brand building activities. Some of those will be short term activities. Some of them will be long term. Some of them will be handled by one department, some by another. Some will be handled in-house, some will be outsourced. Some will be focused on one type of customer, some will be focused on another. There are lots of reasons why different activities can lead to inconsistencies. There are lots of excuses for not being consistent and not having integration. But somebody has to take responsibility for imposing that consistency, for taking advantage of integration and the benefits that it's going to bring to your campaigns. And here's the bad news. That somebody is you. Consistency over time is another problem for regular businesses. We tend to come across a can't fail concept and want to put it into effect straight away, despite the fact we only put our last can't fail concept into action three months ago. We tend not to give our techniques the time, the years they need to bear fruit. Regular businesses don't have the hierarchies that would impose a level of consistency. Because in regular businesses, the MD can have a new idea and insist that it's imposed straight away. Bigger organisations have the committees, departments and processes that slow them down. Normally that's a bad thing, but in this instance, perversely, it has a positive effect on imposing consistency across the organisation's communications. In our pursuit of integrated marketing communications, we also need to maintain a consistent style or character to all of our communications. This again is difficult for regular organisations because style and character is often a byproduct of the person who's producing it or at least guiding it. And in regular organisations with small teams, often of one, the entire marketing department changes when yesterday's marketing manager is replaced by today's. Bigger organisations don't have this problem. They have a team that has its own momentum that outlives the individuals within it. 
But however big your marketing team is, you need to define a style and stick to it. And that style has got to match your brand. It's got to match the character of your organization. So if you're trying to sell classy underwear, then you don't want to launch a social media campaign where people send in photos of themselves at famous places flashing their scrundies. Not classy. Style can be considered every bit as important as content in all of your marketing communications. Red Bull, for example, their next endeavour is not going to be the Red Bull Scrabble Challenge. Red Bull are famous for risky stuff, dangerous stuff, exciting stuff. They do blokes jumping out of balloons on the edge of space, Formula One teams, air racing, the soapbox challenge. They do lots of different activities that have the same common style and character that is compelling. If only the drink didn't taste of cough medicine. You may have got the impression so far that the only thing that matters in integrated marketing communications is consistency. It's not as much what you promote or how you promote it as long as you stay on message. Think again. There's one enormous way in which what you say is critical, and that is the brand attributes that you promote. If you're known for quality, don't try to promote price. If you're well known as a dependable organisation that's maybe a little bit dull, don't try to promote excitement. Remember that big businesses spend millions of pounds every single year, usually trying to persuade us that they're something they're not. I mean, how many of us really believe that the banks are in it with us together, whatever it is? Nobody. Regular businesses can't even try to do this sort of thing. We don't have the budget to try to promote a false attribute. All we can do is promote brand attributes that we know we exhibit. And how do we know what our brand attributes are? That's where you have to do a brand survey. You have to find out from your customers what you mean to them, what they think of you. Big and successful organisations are remarkably good at integrated marketing communications. Think about it. If you see a simple red advert with white text, it's probably virgin. If you see a turquoise promotion that's got grey bits and little yellow letters in dots, it's EE. If you've got a bloke sliding down Everest in a coracle, he's probably sponsored by Red Bull. This is no coincidence. Putting consistency across your marketing communications, adopting integrated marketing communications, is not a guarantee of instant success. If you make your short-term sales promotions perfectly in tune, matching your long-term brand building, it won't suddenly turn your local travel agency into Airbnb. But this type of activity is one of the things organisations like Airbnb do so well. The sad fact is that big businesses are big and successful because they do things like this better than regular businesses. And that's really, really frustrating because there's no reason why they should be better. Their marketing practices are not secret. They're not even surprising. I mean, is there anything in this video that is a sort of alleluia moment that you'd never have thought of otherwise? No, remember, good marketing is common sense. Regular businesses like ours can do this kind of thing just as well as big businesses, as long as we have the will to follow our principle. So what are your next steps? So, if you want to follow the DIY route and do everything yourself, step one, ensure your visual consistency. Have you got your logos? Have you got your branding colours? Have you got your typefaces sorted? Two, do you know your brand attributes? If not, it's time to do a brand survey. Otherwise, you're going to try to promote a brand attribute you don't have, and all your promotions will fall flat on their faces. Three, do you know what style, what character you are going to promote? Remember, it's got to be consistent with your brand attributes. There's a reason that Michael Parkinson doesn't offer you a Parker pen to drink Red Bull. 
when you've decided what your style is going to be, write down that style in a style guide so that one person can't derail the whole thing if they come in, even if they're the latest marketing god. When you start a new campaign, plan all of the promotional activities you're going to do in that campaign at the same time, even if you're not going to execute them until much later. And some of them may never get executed at all. But by planning them at the same time, you make sure they all share the same themes and they're consistent. It's always worth having a hit list of channels that you use, the social media, TV adverts if you've got a big budget, print adverts if you haven't, digital adverts of course. And then when you come to each new promotion, each new campaign you want to run, you decide which of those channels you're going to use. Finally, make sure you have an overall marketing communications plan and stick to that plan. Stop doing ad hoc activities. Avoid the shiny, shiny syndrome that so often moves us off track. So you're doing a project, you're 40% of the way through that project, and then suddenly you're diverting to do something else. It just means that 60% of that first project doesn't get done and the 40% you have done doesn't work. It just means you move from one ineffective activity to another ineffective activity. Secondly, there's the assisted route. If you don't have the time, the people or the systems that would allow you to put integrated marketing communications into place, that's what we're here for. Give us a call. We are surprisingly friendly.